Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Paul. And we're going to challenge you to transform your financial future through the principles of the most profitable business in the world, banking. We believe everyone should be involved in two businesses, the business that you're in and the banking business. Everyday people can replicate what bankers have been doing for centuries to leverage capital and build wealth through private lending. Join us as we uncover the truths about money, expose lies and myths, and flip conventional financial advice on its head. Here we go. All right, well, here we are yeah. in uh, beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. Just finished up the 2023 IBC Think Tank. So Yeah, this was a good one. Yeah, it was really good. You know, last year was good. Um, I, I feel like they get better, more quality every year. So uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. Yeah. If you can't tell, we're sitting on a, a bench in our hotel room to record this. Uh, last year, we set a precedent to do a video after the... Yeah, think tank, and we're gonna do the same thing every year we come down here. And last year we were in like a, a different room uh, that was dedicated to kind of doing something like that, but that wasn't available this year. So we're just kind of doing it from a hotel room, looking at the highway and the cars drive by. Beautiful view. It's a great view of. It's very loud. A lot of traffic. A lot right of there. traffic. Yeah, but that's all right. Um, yeah, we're back here in Birmingham. Um, man, it was. Uh, I always forget how fun being around a bunch of insurance agents can be. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not what you think, is it? No, it's not what you think. It's not. Uh, it sounds pretty nerdy, but it, it does. It kind of goes back to one of the presentations that that uh, David Stearns, who's the you know the, the I guess what would you call him the chairman or just the head of the NNI, the Nelson Nash Institute. Yeah, uh, David was is was uh, Nelson's uh, son-in-law, um, and Nelson, of course graduated in 2019 uh, so David's taken over since then but he I, I, why don't we just run down the agenda here and kind of give our thoughts on yeah. what, what this was all about and kind of what we're taking away and can pass on um, so yeah welcome rem remarks from Carlos Laura so Carlos is a fantastic brilliant mind and has written let's see uh, how privatized banking really works yep the case for IBC yep and then I don't know how many Periodical, periodicals he's written that yeah. you can find on the NNI uh, website uh, that he co-authored. A lot of them with with uh, Dr. Robert Murphy as well. Right. Um, anything from you know policy loan repayment to um, you know tax strategies and all kinds of things that touch IBC that are important for clients and agents to know. Yeah, and I think we're going to um, to in future episodes. I think what we want to do is maybe take a deep dive on some of those articles that he's written on certain topics. So we could always, and, and then put the link for that article in the show notes afterwards. Um, really kind of want to help feed everybody and send everybody back to the source, the NNI, um, infinitebanking.org, uh, and then Nelson's book. But we can put links to those articles and, and we'll discuss them on the show, read them. And uh, I think that'll be pretty helpful because he's, yeah, brilliant mind has, has done a lot of good and spreading spreading this work and carlos is not a life insurance agent never has been yeah he was introduced to infinite banking concept and dividend paying whole life insurance just like all of you were or are um through through media through meeting nelson and mm -hmm. figuring out is is there something wrong with this or is it you know or is it great it's legit right yeah. so yeah well cool um and then let's see david stern spoke uh about you know, are, are we IBC practitioners or insurance agents? So it's kind of funny. I, I said, hey, you know, we've been hanging around with insurance agents for really three days now, uh, but really we're IBC practitioners. And that's what we would all, I think, really call ourselves is we're, we're IBC coaches and practitioners, uh, mentors, whatever you want to say, educators is really what we are. Yes, I think people have that kind of Hollywood guy with a briefcase going yeah. <laughs> around door to door or maybe some of you who have touched this industry or, or even another type of sales industry of cold calling people and I have a, a guy I work with who's also a real estate agent and he uh, you know cold calls and I, I mean that just sounds terrible but right um, you know that's not what we're gonna find here you know these are some of the best life insurance agents in in North America because we have a lot of Canadian practitioners here as well uh, who are great people, um, always have something thoughtful to say, and 
and are just kicking butt spreading Nelson's message up up north of the uh, of the border. But yeah, I think it's important an important distinction. I, I tell people, you know, the the whole life insurance is the vehicle to practice IBC. I don't I feel like I'm not, I'm not selling you life insurance. I'm teaching you IBC and to practice it you have to use this product. Right. Yeah, and and make no mistake about it, it's life insurance and that was kind of one of the yeah. one of the things that that came up during the the think tank is um, hey, there's there's a lot of people out there who are making this something or, or trying to hide what it is because they don't want to tell people it's whole life insurance or they want to make it something it's not. So we spent a lot of time actually talking about um, all the noise out there, which if you've you listened to our podcast for any amount of time, you probably heard us talk about the noise, right? Which is basically anything you can find on YouTube where somebody, as as uh, Ryan says, somebody who could find the letters I, B, C on a keyboard yeah, and, and type it in and then they, they talk about it. But make no mistake, those those people making all the noise out there on TikTok, on, on YouTube with all these fantastic claims of, hey, make money buying cars or, you know, take loans and increase your wealth. Um, like those people are not IBC practitioners. Yeah, that's right. And unfortunately, the, you know, Nelson's message is getting, and I'm going to use the word that was used this week. Um, I don't think it's offensive, but it's, you know, bastardizing what Nelson taught in his 92 page book, Becoming Your Own Banker, right? Um, you know, that's, that's not the way it should be done. And um, we end up, when you find us, we end up having to undo a lot of that damage because you've been watching or listening or reading the wrong things. Mm -hmm. So our recommendation always, and this is kind of the point, is going back to the source, going back to the Nelson Nash Institute, finding a practitioner from there. There's only three, 300, 350 in North America, so there's not that many of us, um, but there are, you know, 200 of them were represented here this week, roughly. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so, you know, two, almost two-thirds were, were here and just... So many people doing wonderful things, but go back to the source is the whole is the whole point, um, and, and and you'll and you'll be taken you know taken care of, right? You know. Next, we heard from Ryan Griggs. So if you don't follow Ryan, uh, you know, I highly recommend following Ryan. He's a he's a co-host of James Nethery's podcast, and James yeah. Nethery is you know one of the godfathers of IBC. I I call him um, one of our our mentors directly and indirectly. Um, but somebody we, we highly regard and is highly regarded in the community. Um, but Ryan speaks, uh, he speaks almost every year, uh, but he talked about policy design and uh, really, you know, kind of talking about the, the current trend out there on how to design these policies that you see on YouTube and TikTok and all that other, um, all that other noise, right? And we really broke it down into here's why that is not an optimal solution for your clients long term. Like it is absolutely not optimal for multiple reasons. Yeah, and Dave, what you're what you're really talking about, what always comes up, and we've and we've now, you know, we've been in this business three, four years, and we are now, especially since we've had the podcast, find, getting clients that come to us with the question of the 10% base policy with a 90% to the PUA with a blended paid up additions rider. And not all companies are offering these products, but this is the, this is the main example that we see of really that bastardization of, of the infinite banking mm -hmm. concept, trying to get that, you know, year one early liquidity uh, instead of, you know, don't be afraid to pay a premium. Don't be afraid to capitalize a system over a period of years. Yeah. Right. You're not going to get rid of the snakes and dragons in oh, in a month. It's going to take, you know, it took Nelson 13 years. Right. It's a very short term mindset that people come in with a lot of times um, when they don't abide by Nelson's rules. One of them is think long term. That's so right. if you want to think short term and just think, you know, right in front of your face. Uh, like anything in life, it's probably it, it's not going to be the best thing for you over your lifetime. So and that's that's what we focus on. That's what IBC practitioners focus on is is what's the best, most optimum solution over your entire lifetime. Because guess what? Doesn't matter if you're 25 or you're 85. The most important thing to you is financing your life. When it comes to money, you need money to survive to get through life. That's right. So. 
it's not, you know, people were like, well, I just want the most money now. Well, what about when you're 60, 70, 80? Do you think you're still going to need money then? Like, let's set you up for success for the rest of your life, not just the next couple of years. Yep. No, absolutely. And unfortunately, Dave, and I think everyone could agree, you know, we have this kind of generational thing where it's, I need, you know, I can get on my phone and find information now and I can... I can order food and some guy will deliver to my door right now. <laughs> and yeah. So that's, you know, it's something that we're fighting. But, you know, this strategy is not for someone like that. If you can't think beyond tomorrow or next week or next month or next year, if you can't think generationally, you know, we had an example today from James and we'll get into it, but that touched the fifth generation. Yeah, right. So not just your children, but your children's children and, and the children after. Right. So, yeah, it's a generational thing. And do you want to be that? Do you want to be the one uh, who, who made that distinction in their presentation of who's going to be the one person to make the difference in your entire family lineage? Right. Um, and for all of us practitioners, probably for 90 99 percent of us, it's going to be us, it's us because our parents didn't do it. Right. You know, our mom, our dad did not set this in motion. So it's going to be us to set it in motion for the rest of, you know, our, uh, our family's exist- existence. We're at least into the collapse of the dollar. <laughs> we won't get into that. Just, um, just a joke. Yeah. Uh, so what was next? We had, so we had Ryan and then we had, the, um, the think tank workshop. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a neat little exercise. Dave acted as our little table scribe and then he, had to, you know, tell the rest of the 200 people what we wrote on our little piece of, our giant piece of paper, actually. Um, Yeah, so that was a workshop of really how do we, as practitioners, uh, we focused on a few different things. How do we bring this message to the masses? Um, How do we better serve our clients? But most of it was really internally focused on the practitioner program. How do we improve the program? What do we want our values to be? Uh, what do we want uh, the characteristics of our practitioners to be once they're trained up um, and they go out into the world and spread this message and, and start working with clients and changing their lives? Because um, it's very important to make sure we stay true to you know, to what Nelson taught and what he viewed, what, what his vision was for this organization. No question. Yeah. You know, I think that, uh, you know, there's certain older producers that we that we enjoy, you know, James and, and several others. And, you know, those are the people we're trying to kind of model ourselves after. And what it boils down to me, Dave, is I want to be an infinite banking concept purist as much as I can be. Uh, and that's teaching Nelson's, not trying to make it better than it is, right? Yes. Yeah. This is life insurance, right? It's not, it's not sexy. It's, I like it, but it's not... Uh, it, it will be to your kids. It will, yeah, when, no when, doubt. When you graduate. Yeah, when they're toasting you at the family reunion someday. Um, yeah. But, you know, pay, staying true to Nelson and, 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 um, and again, not just bastardizing that message. And, and then what also what, what the Institute needs to do for, for us and the message, because as we stated earlier, it's being distorted. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people out there just that can, like Dave said, find IBC in the keyboard, and and they're just they're not doing it correctly, and are also not associated with the infinite banking concept, which is a, a trademarked, right. And you know what? You know, name. Ironically, they're really paying homage to what Nelson built and what we are all continuing that legacy as practitioners. Um, they obviously revere our community yet they're not a part of it. So they want to take the credit for what everybody here has helped build and perpetuate, uh, yet they don't want to be a part of it so that they can go out and do their own thing and kind of take credit for it themselves. Right. So it's, it's sad, but you know, people will be people and that's, that's what happens, you know, in a free world. So, but, uh, yeah, I, I do believe we're going to be, uh, the, the organization will be making a commitment to crack down on, on people who are using the IBC name, um, really inappropriately and, and without authorization. Yeah. So as they should. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. Then we talked about, um, Barry got up and talked about income and legacy using IBC for income later in life. And I think at our age, a lot of our clients, 
it, it just so happens your clients are usually around your demographic. Sure. That's just the way it happens because yep. those are the that's that's your network, essentially. So people, you know, our, our average client age is about our age. So most of them are not not quite at the age of like retirement is my number one priority. How old really are you, not. Dave? Uh, Forty three. How old are you? Forty three. Okay. So there you go. So that's our average client age. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd say once people hit their fifties, it's more of those whiplash years where they're looking back and saying, oh, wow, a lot of time's gone by and I'm very close to where that- Get closer know, to 60 than you are 20. Well, I'm already closer to uh, to social security than I am to the drinking age. Right. So, but I'm not, most people our age are still not focused on retirement. They, they feel like, you know, you got plenty of years ahead of you to really make your stride. And really in your forties, I think you are hitting your stride. Sure. Financially and professionally. So you should really, take your 40s and you know your 30s your 20s you're trying to get started your 30s you're trying to survive and get established your 40s you're making progress and you better be doing something with that progress besides spending it parkinson's that's, law that's right yeah yep you got to you ought to be with this inflationary environment we see and we talked a lot about inflation this week um, because it is it's a relevant topic but you better be putting away 20% of your income folks um, you should endeavor to do that, I should say. Yeah, which is a lot easier when you can put that 20% of income away and still have access to it and utilize it That's for right. those expenses you're going to use that, that you're going to spend money on anyway. I don't mean inside a qualified plan. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Put it somewhere where you have access, where you have uh, guarantees. You're, you know, it's never, never loses value. Never loses value. Never stops compounding. Right. Oh, and there's a giant death benefit to boot. Crazy. So Sounds, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thinking of this as a, a, a retirement vehicle, eventually a passive income vehicle. Yeah. One of, you want to unpack that a little bit real quick? Just so, <clears throat> so what we're talking about, folks, is, you know, life insurance, this is not a qualified plan of any kind, right? You read that Nelson's book, but it can be used as a passive income generator you know, Nelson didn't believe in retirement. He was working to the to the day he graduated. But a, a properly designed policy or series of policies can be used by that first generation who's doing IBC as a passive income source. Absolutely, tax income tax free as well, isn't it, Dave? Yep, absolutely. So, I mean, there's examples of you, know, you can put in this much a year. What when you go do tra traditional financial planning? What do they say? Hey. Put away two hundred fifty dollars a month. By the time you're sixty five, you'll have a million dollars. A million dollars, and then you can start spending it, right? Well, there's no guarantees to that. No. I mean, that's a roll of the dice. This, you can look at these plans and say, hey, by the time you hit sixty five, if that's when you want to pull yourself out of service and start taking passive income, you can choose to do that, and we can determine how much tax free income you can pull out every single year until you, you pick the how long you're going to live until 100 years old and still leave a death benefit behind that's right and yeah. uh you know i don't know what that's worth but it's certainty it's guarantees it's you know if you can cover at a minimum cover your basic needs you know yeah. food and shelter and medical care um with something that's guaranteed and then maybe roll the dice with the rest if you want to but at least have some guarantees somewhere yeah one thing that one thing that you know, having an adequate amount of whole life insurance in place in force upon upon death is that you know that has allowed those folks. If let's say they had an old, they had four hundred one ks, they had IRAs, they had other like tax qualified plans because that's what they were taught to do during their working years. And we're going to see that with the baby boomer generation. We're going to see that with people in our generation that were sucked into all that. Not not everyone was, but most people are. Yeah. Um, but having that life insurance in place allows them to spend down those other assets that they're going to pay taxes on most of it, right? If it's not Roth, which they restrict how much you can put in Roth, don't they, Dave? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because it's because uh, it grows tax free. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> and it's already been taxed. Yeah, it's already um, been taxed. But it, you know, the spending down of those other assets, and you know, if there's a downturn in the market, we've talked about sequence of returns in another episode. But that's kind of what I'm getting at: is that it's a license to spend those other assets, and then you still can leave because I want to hold this off so I can leave a legacy, at least something to my kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they end up, you know, pinching pennies just to do those things instead of really enjoying their their last third of their life. 
Yeah, so what does that lead to? It leads to something that nobody in the traditional financial world talks about, and that's underspending their reti- retirement savings. Mm-hmm. They're underspending. Like, that's a terrible thing, too. Yes. Because you're not getting the enjoyment out of everything you work for your right. entire working life. Like, that's pretty sad. It's it really sad. Yeah, it, it sounds awful. <clears throat> it really does. Yeah, but that is the conventional financial paradigm that you're likely in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I want to jump ahead to another presentation that was you know, further along in the agenda because sure. it fits right now. Um, Mike Everett got up and spoke and uh, he said, that, you know, there's three questions he asks clients. Um, hey, are income taxes going to go up or go down? Uh, is your cash worth more today or tomorrow? And do you want to pay taxes on a small amount or the big amount? Like the answer to those questions are obvious. Yes. You know, the second question, there might be some people who, who think the value of your cash is the same no matter what because they don't understand time you know, value of money, time value of money and, and the history of money and inflation. But yeah, obviously your cash is worth more today than it is tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So that million dollars you're saving up is, oh, I can retire when I hit a million. That's not going to be, even today, like uh, you think a million bucks, that doesn't, that barely gets anybody up off the couch these days, like a million dollars. I think it was a lot in 1980. It was, a, it was a lot in probably 1990. Maybe even yeah. 1990. But I just think today it's, I mean, let's face it, uh, I'm looking at real estate in Tennessee, East Tennessee, that is mediocre and it's a million bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's sad. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Then there was a conversation about well, inflation. We just kind of hit on it. So, you know, how does, uh, how can practitioners help? Really, it was about helping clients understand, understand what, it is. what it is. Yeah, so, and we've talked about it a lot, but just real quick, it's just an increase in the money supply. That's what inflation is. It's more money in circulation. How does that happen? What happens when the Fed lowers interest rates and more people are taking loans and they're spending more on houses and on, or on everything, right? Or stimulus, right? Where does the government that's $30 trillion in debt get stimulus money? It's created, right? So that's more money that just poof, magic, didn't exist a minute ago, now $6 trillion exists, and then you get a check in the mail saying, hey, sorry, we you know locked down the economy, here you go. Here's your $700. Oh, by the way, the dollar is, that this, you know, the purchasing power of this check is, is now, you know, 20% less than it was yesterday. I'm, I'm exaggerating, obviously, but you get I, the point. I mean, not so much. No. But yeah, I mean, really not. So, yeah, just making sure people have that basic fundamental education of what inflation is and, and what rising rising prices are the result of inflation. That's right. Um, but you could learn all of that on your own from reading Nelson's book and reading how privatized banking really works. Like those those two books right there, you'll have you'll probably have more knowledge than ninety percent of the population and probably ninety five percent of politicians. Guaranteed. Yeah, probably 99% of them. Yeah, yeah, I'm or being generous. Maybe even 100. I mean, we were just talking to somebody last night when we were hanging out because all we do is network the entire time when we're not, you know, we come back to the room to record a podcast right. and he sleep, spent, that's it. spent time uh, as a congressional fellow or mm-hmm. whatever. And uh, and he, he, just, he did not have good things to say he about he said, them. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah they're, they're basically C students with A egos. Right, that's what they are. Very dangerous, which is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah. So, uh, all right, moving on. Uh, so most of that was all yesterday. And then, you know, today we had uh, a really great conversation from from a guy who was one of the first to really meet Nelson. In, in 1997? Wow. I was a, no, I think it was after the book came out. Or was it before that? Gosh, I thought it was. 90- the book came out in two thousand. Yeah, I thought it was ninety seven. But oh yeah, you're right because he didn't bring it. Maybe he didn't bring that book forward. He brought other books to. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So he he brought Nelson in and he talked about talked about some really cool um, kind of pulling out the heartstring stories about hey, we're not just setting up these banking systems for people. It's a lot more than that because of what they're able to do throughout their lifetime that they would not otherwise have been able to do if they didn't have this this structure in place and they had their money. Your money has to reside somewhere. So where else would they have put it? Probably into a qualified plan or some yep. investments. And that cabin never would have been built. This was an example. The father and son got to build a cabin together that they that the wife always wanted. And using their cash value. During their, using their cash value. Um, and then at the kind of at the end of it, 
uh, you know, they hammered every nail in together, and at the end of it, you know, they discovered that, you know, dad had pancreatic cancer, and then he died within, you know, within a year. It's a very aggressive sickness, so, um, but they, you know, they were so thankful to, to that gentleman for saying, yeah, you could, you could build it now. Like, look at this. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's kind of, the, that's like the seen and the unseen conversation. Yeah, you're right. Um, at, a, at a deeper level, even, um, you know, those are the things that never would have been realized without the infinite banking concept. Yep, exactly. So uh, I can't wait to have some of those stories of my own. Minus the, at, minus the pancreatic cancer. But yeah, I mean, I don't want the story to be exactly like that. But uh, I mean, there probably are stories like that already. Do you have a I hammer? Mean, I do have a couple hammers. Yeah, different sizes. They all drive nails. There you go. Um, but yeah, last time I used it, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Are you questioning whether I can use a hammer? No. Actually, have you ever played hammer slogging? I think it might be a Minnesota game. No. But you get a hammer. Okay. Let's digress for just a second. Okay. Get a large, like a tree trunk or something like, or a large piece of wood. Okay. You put a, a, a pretty good sized nail. You just tap it in, so it's just standing there. Yeah. And then everybody, you you know, get several people in a circle, and everybody has their own nail. Um. And instead of taking the you know the, the fat part of the hammer, the head of the hammer, yep. you turn it around and use like the skinny part of the hammer, and you get one tap. One you know you get every when it's your turn, you take a tap. Whoever drives their nail into the wood first wins. So you got you you know you can take a big tap, but you're probably gonna miss. Right. Or you take a little tiny tap, and it's probably not gonna move very far. Yeah. That's hammer slogging. So hammer slogging. It's a good game to play. Uh, you know, it's probably a, a popular drinking game. But you might be seeing three nails. Just hit the one in the hit middle. Hit the one in right? the middle. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Moving on. The next one. Probably one of my favorites. Uh, like it is every time. James Nethery. Uh, he talked about the simplicity of the infinite banking concept. Yep. And Nelson probably said tens of thousands of times ever since he started teaching this over his you know, seminars and this concept, this idea that you could become your own banker at the you and me level is ridiculously simple. Yep. And y'all have heard us say that before. Um, it has simplified my life dramatically. <clears throat> and we had an example, another simple example of like how to keep it simple from, from Sarbla uh, in the last presentation. He said, and I've gotten this question you probably have from clients like, Hey, how do you, do you have a spreadsheet you use in order, like if you have multiple policies, do you have a spreadsheet you use to track your, your IBC system and what money's where and, and you know, what that's reserved for? And, uh, and Sarbaugh says, um, well, no, I don't, but why don't you send me your spreadsheet that you, you use for your checking, checking account, account cash flow? And they're like, what? Well, I don't have one. He's like, exactly. Yep. It's, you got to keep it simple. It's no different than just another checking account or I would really call it more of like another savings account. You know, it's not something you want to take money in and out of daily. Right. It's for, again, this is for financing the needs, the things of life. Right. And Nelson in his book, very simply, he starts off with a, with a vehicle purchase mm -hmm. right after a capitalization phase of four or five years. And then, then, you know, there's other examples about education and, and trucking and the CD sisters and all these other examples. Um, I don't, some of you are spreadsheet people. I, Dave and I are just, I'm not. I've seen these elaborate spreadsheets from these academy graduates where there's, <laughs> there's you know, 40 tabs going all to age 60, whatever, and they're all connected and they all automatically update. And it's, that's all great. Um, if that's your thing. Yeah, yeah but, that's what your brain needs um, or likes. If you need all that, fine, but you can just log into your policy uh, or system of policies and see them if you're the owner all, all in one page and, it's very simple, yeah. um, and you should and you should do those things, right? You should be logging in and checking. Hey, is is oh look, my cash value went up again, and so did my death benefit. Yeah, uh, or I have to pay my annual premium or whatever, which I can pay through my portal. Like it's so anyway, but yeah, um, great presentations this year overall, though. Just yeah, really, really good, and, and they're all and it's often they're all always good, but this was really, really good. Yeah, so. What would you say the theme of this uh, think tank was? They didn't really say this is the theme this year, but yeah. what, what kind of feeling did you get as the theme? It's funny, last year I, th I thought it was like get back to basics because we all brought mm -hmm. our books. Sure, yeah, right? we did. And we, we read from the book and 
people talked about certain, uh, but uh, gosh, I you know I think I think this year was really there was a lot of discussion of proper proper I want to say proper classification, really of of the message. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, the, good point. Does that make sense? I stole yeah. that from Nelson's book, Proper Classification, right? Yeah. Um, of what, you know, we've had an episode about this, what IBC is, and more importantly, what it is not. Right. Right. It is a process. There's a the process to become your own banker. The product just happens to be boring, old, guaranteed, awesome, dividend-paying whole life insurance. Yeah. Some of you are turned off by that. I'm sorry, go use a CD like the example in the book. You'll still do well. You'll just do less, less well. Less well. <laughs> less gooder. <laughs> you won't yeah. be as good <laughs> as, yeah. as the person doing IBC with dividend paying a life. Yeah, no, I would agree. That's good. Another, another thought that comes to mind is just the word others. I feel like every presentation, it, it was not about me, the agent. It was not about commission, and, commission the, you know, the product, you know, ego. policy design. Yeah, it was all about others. Even even the the discussion on policy design, where we got into some real like nitty gritty details, the purpose of that discussion was to better serve others. That's right. I feel like every single one of these had a message of serving others and focusing on people and relationships versus focusing on product and and you know money. That's right, and that's the. You know, and some of these people that presented are the are some of the biggest life insurance producers, not only in the as part of the Nelson National Institute, but they're the you know some of the biggest in the country. Yeah, um, who make yeah multiple seven figures doing this and have for long, a long a long time, and they and they just you know they're servant leaders. Yeah, and and they, and it's really nice. What I always get from from coming here, and this is my second think tank. I missed my first one uh, because of army stuff, but it's always you know getting back to getting back to the basics, and it kind of gives me a recharge and a recaging of of uh, not that I forget, right? But really makes you reminds you of why you got into this and why you're doing it. Yeah, and definitely taking back a lot of good notes on ways to make the experience for my clients better and the ongoing coaching and interaction better. So if you're a, a current client of, of mine, for sure, um, you could expect some changes coming soon. I'm going to be reaching out and putting some time on the calendar because we need to connect on a regular basis and um, I need to, to better serve you all um, to make sure that you know, you're know you not left on an island and you're not um, going about this on your own. Like I'm here to coach. Uh, you know, you can reach out to me anytime. And for any listeners, feel free to drop us a note. We got our email down there. If you want to, uh, you know, leave a, a question on the YouTube videos, we get a lot of those. Um, so we're happy to to answer any questions you guys have. Yeah, and I'll say this about about Dave here. He, I'm his client. That is for that four, is a fact. for four for more than half of my policies. Yeah. Right. And you know, he sends out a monthly newsletter, or he calls it a morsel, I think, and it's always something something worthwhile to read. And I always and I always read it, of course. And I kind of smile every time I get it because it's like, huh, you know, you know, I'm an agent too, but it's it's good. Um, so he is he is serving his clients very well. And like we've told you all before, is you know, when we get into this thing, uh, you know, your relationship with us can be whatever you want it to be. True. You know, some people are are kind of hands off, but you know, we're always here to answer your questions. We're always here to to again. So you're not on that island, right? You you know, Uncle Bob says you're. You're being so silly with your money, putting in, you know, dividend paying whole life insurance, but uh, but you got into this for a reason, and you know better, right? Yep. He hasn't read the book. He hasn't listened to anything. He doesn't. He doesn't know anything. He's from a position of ignorance. Oh, well, Uncle Bob. No, he's just terrible. Yeah. <laughs> just terrible. Well, all right. We got some people waiting for us downstairs for dinner. We do. Well, yeah. We and better. we don't have to pay. I don't think. We don't have to pay. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Oh, the best kind of dinner. It's, it's always the tastiest. Yeah, when no. somebody else picks up. Especially, I mean, you guys know he loves free stuff. Who doesn't? Yeah, that's true. Well, free stuff usually is crappy. Uh, yeah, but, it, but in I this case, this it's going to be good. There is an exchange, a medium of exchange. So yeah, there's some money being exchanged. So. Yeah. Anyway, right thanks on. for listening, everybody. And All right, and until next time, signing control, off. Control your capital, or somebody else will.
Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. If you'd like to have a conversation with us to see how you can become your own banker, or if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to tackle on a future episode, please send us an email to David and Paul at the ibcguys.com. And subscribe and leave us a review if you're on Apple. Follow and leave us a five-star review if you're on Spotify. And please share this with your friends. We'll see you next week.